and this this session is related to the 15 percent of the our certification exam where enterprise integration architecture concept is written or what kind of uh, uh, data load concept we will go okay and what is the agenda basically for this session is as an architect what should you consider when you are bulk data upload is required when we are loading a lot of data when what are things you should consider as an architect these are the problem basically comes when we are uploading a lot of data using swap and rest api okay like a full data upload issues single record api calls large number of related records or data skew we normally know that data skew problems comes cascading changes and roll up summary fields let's go each by in detail with example so full data upload issue basically if you have a scenario where two systems are connected with each other okay two synchronize their data okay so when they do synchronization of the data sometimes they are sending the complete data to upload in a other system they are not know they are not knowing that okay only 10 records or 15 records has been changed but they keep updating the complete database so it's a very uh, like for your application as a salesforce application is a huge impact on the system and plus there is also a consider uh, the, the, you should also consider about the salesforce api limit because we know that we have a daily limit and if you are uh, uploading all data that that limit will be going to be hampered or you can say that limit will be uh, decreased in your daily limit so if that kind of a scenario what should you consider how you should upload data so that both system will be connected the first time the solution is whenever the first time the data integration is done at that time you should give the full data upload okay after that you should not go with the full data upload you should go with the incremental change upload okay you should only upload the data which is added which is deleted or modified okay you should not upload a data which is not done in all of three other than these three because it is a vestige of your memory, vestige of server resource, a vestige of your API limit to the Salesforce. Okay. And now question, how you should know that which record is added, deleted, or modified? There's two concepts in Salesforce. Either you should go with a system timestamp, or you can indicate or you can add one flag in your record. And that flag will indicate, okay, this particular record has been updated in a target system or not. Based on then you can upload the data. If you don't want to handle those things in your side, okay, as a code side or the Salesforce side, you can use a ETL tool also. ETL tool to, uh, automatically they have these kind of feature. They can actually check okay which record has been changed in part, uh, source uh, source record source system and which should go to the target system. They already have that kind of mechanism. Okay. So you can use that like a ETL tool, or you should use a custom flag or timestamp if you are using doing your implementation in Apex. The second things uh, bulky bulky API, API code basically we all know that whatever code we are writing, that should be bulky fied. and it's not only that you should run, run basically code your code Apex code our so-called code as a bulkified your api should also bulkified we normally have seen that apis normally process only single record why should only process single record you can create a api which should process multiple record as well you can create an api which process insert multiple record which uh, gives a result in multiple for the multiple records so we should create an api as well for the for the batch processing or the bulk processing okay so everyone know that okay uh, that uh, multiple records can be inserted using our normal insert or our uh, dynamic dml statement in our salesforce okay but that that's dynamics uh, so called or dynamic dynamics uh, sokl basically also support different kind of object also in bulk bulkification in, in the example opportunity or account they are different object but 
the system or Salesforce can insert both record in a single statement. Okay, so we should consider all those factors when we are doing our API code. Okay, otherwise, for the each request, when you are sending a each request, and for each request, your daily limit is going to be decreased. So you should always take care of bulkification for not single object, for multiple objects also, you can go for the bulkification in single statement. The third is data skew. I think most of you know that what is skew. But the skew basically, uh, data skew issue comes when basically a large number of records is assigned or uh, to a single parent record basically. Just take example, it normally comes when you have 10, more than 10,000 record is assigned to one account record. So of course, it will create a problem. So how that problem will come? So whenever in Salesforce as an architecture is written, so, <clears throat> so whenever you update a child record, at that time, a parent record also get locked. Okay, so take example, you are updating in 10 lakhs of record, you are updating 100 records. For 100 records, a record is a parent record is being locked. So if there any record is being locked, of course there is a performance hit in your system. So we should avoid more than 10,000 records to a single parent. Instead of that, a single part, basically instead of using a one record as a unassigned record to be as like for the child record, you can create a multiple kind that kind of a record as a you can say as a parking lot statement or parking lot records. Okay, you can uh, let 10 records or you can 100 records as, uh, as account records, which can be used for unassigned or unassigned uh, child record basically. So in this case, all those records will be divided into multiple accounts so that data skew problem will not come in your system. The fourth problem is case cutting change issue. This problem comes when you have parent and child or master detail relationship in your system. So whenever the child record is updated, okay, so it is basically it internally it runs a lot of system or a lot of features in your system, Salesforce system. Just take example when you are updating, a trigger can be fired. A workflow can be uh, executed, or some assignment rule can be executed. So, when particular Apex trigger is fired, maybe that trigger is inserting or updating other system record. So that again, that trigger will fire, and based on that, other system will uh, our workflow will also uh, run. So, it will create, uh, you can say, a lot of problem when you do a date a bulk data. And it will create a performance issue because all when you do data upload, all thing will will go. Buffer rule will fire, Apex trigger will fire. So it will can it create a problem in your say, uh, performance as a performance issue will be there when you do the data upload for the at least uh, bug later bug load bug load basically. So how to avoid this situation that uh, it will not create a problem? So as a system, we know that which are the very much important when the data insertion is required which are the uh, which are the trigger is required when you should go with the uh, data insertion or the data upload we we know that particular form so when we do the data upload we can avoid such non important triggers non important workflow rule or some assignment rule we can disable those features when we do the bulk data upload and after that data loss is done we can rerun that or those of we or we can deactivate sorry activate again those uh, workflow rule and triggers and assignment rule those all things we can do through the custom setting or custom metadata type uh, can be used it's based on our architecture which we have created okay but we can disable data validation based on our uh, requirement Uh, last is roll of summary issue. So in roll of summary, we know that there is uh, basically based on the child's data, we are showing data in a parent record. Okay, we are summary summary of data is being there. 
but whenever the update in your child recall will be done, the recalculation is required. So if the recalculation is required in concept or large data update, again, it will be going to hamper your performance because every like a, because a roll of summary almost takes 30 to 40 minutes or around 20 to 30 minutes to, to uh, rescan the complete uh, field and do the roll of summary again. Okay. So it might be create a problem when you do the roll of summary. So how to, how to avoid that situation? So basically, uh, you can do the disable the trigger workflow. You can disable the validations, okay, and uh, do the whatever data upload you are doing. You can do based on that, okay. Sometimes it's also required that okay, uh, child records create a problem, okay. So uh, lookup relation instead of a master detail relationship, if we can go with a lookup relationship, the wherever is need, we can switch to that. Of course, I only in the case if it's, Role of summary is required, then only we should go the master detail relationship. Otherwise, we should go with the lookup relationship. So these are the five important points were there when you do we should you do when you are doing the bulk load in your using SOAP and REST API in your Salesforce system. So if you have a question related to these five points, you can ask.